WEMF Radio Now. Uh, something we've talked about in the past when we used to have the old show and on my YouTube channel. I've also done some videos on these gentlemen. Uh, YouTube.com, Mike Can. You can look it up. It's always popular on the internet to talk about uh, the truth movement. If you don't know, look up the truth movement. Listen what, here, how do you, how do you Listen here. I'll tell you about the truth. I'll tell you about how real I am. Okay? Who are you imitating I've been doing right this now? for 15 years. InfoWars.com. Listen, Listen, bud. Listen, bud. Yeah. Alex Jones. We're imitating Alex Jones right now. If you don't know who he is, you should probably look him up. Alex Jones. Um, or maybe or what do we do? Or maybe don't. Yeah. Well, maybe don't. You know, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little roundtable with our crew on some of these uh, different names, topics related to the truth movement. We'll start it right out with Alex Jones. Uh, the first thing I want to say about Alex Jones, the only way he could really be awesome is if he really was Bill Hicks punking these quotation mark patriots. But unfortunately, he's not. That's what I got to say about Alex that, Jones. That would be pretty awesome. Cause if he was. Bill if Hicks he, was. Yeah, that whole man. conspiracy that a lot of people on the internet think he might be Bill Hicks because they have the same. I think Alex Jones thinks he might be a Bill Hicks. He could. I think he, he might have start, been the one who started the rumor. He could. I think it was. Yeah. And it's also, you know, he does have connections to Bill Hicks through Kevin Booth and Austin, Texas. And so there is some uh, connection there. And you yeah. never know. He could it's be. like six degrees of. Separation. Separation. Kevin Bacon. Yeah. You know? But it, it would be, like, that's the only way I could think that Alex Jones would be cool. If he was punking <laughs> all these idiots who listen to him and follow him and think he's the man because he's clearly not. Yeah, no. He, um, I mean, it's great. A, a clip we posted of, if everyone wants to check it out on YouTube, it's it's uh, Alex Jones during Y2K. And he's talking about the Russians and how they're attacking and that the military is massing, and that there's four like nuke plants that have shut down because of Y2K, but he's only naming one, and he's not going to name the other three, but someone told him two days ago, but he's just not going to say it right now. Maybe I'll say it. No, I'm not going to say it. Putin's coming. Putin's yeah. coming. <laughs> like, like Vladimir Putin is, is, is um, Satan's yeah. spawn, <laughs> and uh, he's coming, and this is also he wins the election, and uh, all kinds of crazy nonsense that just isn't true. And, it, you know, this was on Y2K, if everyone remembers, they, everyone was afraid that computers were going to blow up the world when they couldn't uh, change over to 2000. Um, and he really pushed this thing, and the night of Y2K, he, it was a War of the Worlds, like, broadcast. This guy comes out of nowhere, does this War of the Worlds. Theater. It was definitely theater. I and mean, the thing about him, you theater. know that he's a joke, and he, that he's just entertainment, in like a WWE wrestler, just like a WWE wrestler, is the next day, there's no um, apology, there's no retraction, there's no, like, oh, maybe I went too far, or maybe some we of these really facts don't the add up. There. Yeah. That's all I mean. yeah. yeah. Wow, I really thought for a second the globalists were really going to just take it into action and just <laughs> take us down. Yeah. But we're still here, America. Wow, real lucky. And, and then the other thing about Alex Jones, too, like, you can look up, uh, there's some other videos, like, 42, like, you know, predictions that Alex Jones was wrong about. Like, every week, he comes up with another one that, like, we're going to be overrun. They're going to, this is it. World War Three is coming. They're coming for your kids. You know, it's like. But the dude's a millionaire. It never happens. Yeah. Like, and the that's, dude's a millionaire. And you're listening to his radio show, and every year there's a new government takedown. There's a new government crackdown. And at the same time, he's selling you Tangy Tangerine. And he's Jim Jones Kool-Aid. He's selling you. Jim, literally selling you Jim Jones Kool-Aid. And let's talk about this, too. Like, um. I love Tupac. I love his music. I love some of the things he used to say. Um, but before I even get there, I'm going I'm to say one, like a Bible quote. Just let's get back to the Bible. By the fruits you will know them. That, to me, is really good advice for anyone who's uh, into following uh, activism or politics or changing things. You'll know them by the fruits. You'll know who the good people are after a certain period of time by what they actually get accomplished what they actually focus on, what they put their time into. And I say Judge Alex Jones and his buddy, Mark Dice, by the fruits. And you know what their fruits are? Fruits are fair, money for them, and no change. And actually, even worse than no change, alienating the mainstream from dissenters. That's not a fair statement. Um, Mark Dice humiliates and makes fools out of everybody. You can't really group him into the fear-mongering camp. Um, you know... That's all. Well, before you say that, I want to make sure people know who that was. That was Garrett Kirkland speaking up. Uh, Garrett, let's talk about Mark Dice because we haven't gotten to him yet. I'm starting uh, to like him lately. After the, fra the after the fake snow fiasco from Georgia, I'm really starting to like him. All right, Mark Dice is another one. He's buddies with uh, J 
Jones, and I asked you, like, uh, Garrett, you just defended him. What's his fruits? Like, what has he prov- like? What has he done? What, who, who who has he moved? What has he done that you think is positive? I mean, he he's out there. I mean, I don't know if I. I definitely don't agree with his methodology. Um, you know, I think he he stages and makes people look kind of foolish on purpose. Um, but I think. You know, he's, he is out there in his own way just trying to promote, you know, what's actually going on, getting people to critically think about, you know, what's happening, questioning, you know, government propaganda around, you know, 9-11, other kinds of things like that. Um, he's actually recently lashed out against Alex Jones. He had a, he had a video up um, lashing out against him. Oh, but he's already made up with him. Has he? I mean, oh, I yeah, know. that was all propaganda, too. The, the well, thing actually, about- real quick, just like... Uh, like- it's great that he's raising awareness, but there's a limit to where that's effective. Like, at some point, action needs to happen. At some point, you have to have dark horses in the race that are willing to lose to actually, like, bring that... You know what I mean? Like, you have to have some kind of result from that. Votes on a page, money going to the right organization. Like, if somebody's just, like, raising awareness, you know what I mean? I can raise awareness by standing on the corner with a sign. Like, I, I, I can make podcasts. And I, and I mean, like, by, by and that I, argument, you know, we should just dissolve the media because they're not doing anything either. Well, that, well that's uh, the thing. Really. Well, let's stop like, Right there. I'm going to interrupt this. I'm going to mediate this. I, I question even the awareness, but I want to let Frank speak on it. But I want to get back to that. Frank, you have something to say? Add to it? You have uh, I mean, I think that, if anything, it comes down to COINTELPRO, like, in, in a certain way. Like, is it COINTELPRO? Because it's always a little bit of truth mixed with a bunch of stuff that's, like, you can't say this word on the radio, that crazy. <laughs> You, well, you can, <laughs> you know? and it, but you know what, too, is like, uh, I don't, I don't want to use the word COINTELPRO because I don't think that's provable. I don't know if we can actually go there, um, but what I will say is, it's again, you, you talked about uh, getting the word out. I want to see votes. That's yeah. what I want to see. Well, I want to see laws like, change. I want to see legislation. You can, We can get the word out all we want, but it's like as long as this cat is lumped with the Alex Joneses of the world, those votes aren't going to happen from the right constituents. Well, I think it's even worse than that. I think that Mark Dice and Alex Jones are lumping. Uh, we're getting lumped in with them. Yeah. Because we question things, and now we're with the crazy man. Yeah. And we're not crazy. And these guys are crazy. Whether they're crazy on purpose or by fault, I don't know, but... I watch them, and uh, Mark Dice never leaves me feeling good. Always negative, always making fun of the, the, uh, the you know, all the stupid people out there. Everyone's stupid. Yeah. Agreed. Why, why but, should but, I even bother if everyone's like, and stupid? Also, like, if, if you're trying why, to turn the mainstream opinion, why are you calling everyone sheeple? Yeah, and uh, how, how are you changing anything by calling everyone stupid? Yeah. It's this whole ego thing where the person behind the computer thinks how intelligent they are, and everyone else is so stupid. So where wherefore are they going to go with it? But well, here, just going to hate society. Here, just here hate becomes society. The, 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 the flaw in this logic, and, and really the flaw in our society, is we're always looking for someone else to do it. So like if they're, someone's not doing enough or this organization is not like being effective enough in what they're doing, it's like, well, we need people to do it. Well, do it. You know, and that's, that's all of us. Every single one of us stop looking towards these idols to be our leaders and do it. We need exactly. to start standing up and well, do that, it for that, ourselves. I think you're agreeing with us because that's the whole point of what And I agree going with you yeah, about Dice being, being a jerk to people. And, you know, you know how I feel about Jones. <laughs> and, and I want to get into more on uh, Mark Dice because he recently did something again that I just think is ridiculous. And he gives himself away. Mark uh, Dice, to me, is the TMZ of the Illuminati. He, he focuses on this a whole Illuminati thing about Jay Z and Beyonce and all these people, and all he does is promote them. Yes, he he is like you know the paparazzi and the the movie stars hate each other but they love each other. You know how that works? Well, that's the way Mark Dyson this whole Illuminati thing is. I'm convinced that Jay Z and those guys and Lady Gaga they love Mark Dice. He helps keep their name in the headlines. He keeps them. Uh, People viewing all the videos, looking for all the signals and all the symbols that they talk about, and and he's not doing anything. He doesn't get anything done. Mark, uh, Garrett, you talked about effectiveness, actually uh, doing it yourself. And that's what I'm talking about. There's none of that. What can you be doing in your neighborhood? We we free, exactly. we freed Cammy D. Some of us in this little community. Some of us in this room helped freed Cammy D. That was one little thing. We've done a lot of little things like that in our neighborhood. That's why we're fighting for this medical cannabis right now, because a lot of us have been fighting for that for a long time. There's these little issues that we fight for, and we get things changed. We get people elected. We get our voice heard. Maybe they don't get elected, but the issues get brought forth. And I really do have a belief that we have so much more power than anyone could ever imagine, but people are taught that they don't have the power. And I think that Mark Dice and Alex Jones are part of that. 
they are making people think that they have no power and that the only way that they can have power is to support these fools. Or buy gold. That's exactly it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's that's, a trap. That's where they get lumped together with these Illuminati images of these demon-worshipping, untouchable... Luciferians. Yeah. Because you get, you get so overpowered. Because when you do see the conspiracies, you do see the evil that's there, it becomes linked to this massive thing that you could never hope you can, to change. And you, can ne- and and you never get the bottom of it. You can, Jones, never, you can never get to the bottom of it. You can never do anything about it. But that's not life. Life no, is in you your backyard. Power. You have power. And this is what I want to say about uh, what Tupac. Because Tupac has, like, has said some great things. And one of his greatest words that I, for me personally, that affected me so deeply is that he said, uh, talking about the Illuminati, he was asked about the Illuminati thing. And he said, if they're so powerful, why do you know about them? Who told Farrakhan? Who told the nation of Islam? Illuminati, it's a trap to keep you unconfident, weak, instead of focusing on them, you need to go out and focus on yourself, get that money. Instead of focusing on other people's money, instead of focusing on Jay-Z's money and all these other boogeyman that you think are out there, yeah. go fix your own neighborhood, go fix your own life. That's, and that's, the, that's the difference between how can I be and I am. Like, you know what I mean? Like, people are constantly asking themselves, like, how can I be this? How can I do this? And it's who I am. WEMF Radio Now. Talking, uh, that was Nikki Smokes. We were talking about the uh, medical cannabis tax. And before that, we were talking about Alex Jones and Mark Dice and uh, the quote from Tupac. <clears throat> you know, I, I agree 100% with what Tupac was saying. And I, and I think that Tupac was actually calling out people like Mark Dice and Alex Jones. And the fact is that Mark Dice turns around and badmouths Tupac and doesn't even represent what he said in videos repeatedly after. And the funny thing is there's a lot of support for Tupac on the Internet, especially on YouTube, because his music and the words he said and how smart and intelligent and the way he passed away. And a lot of Tupac fans, every time Mark Dice posts this BS about him, Tupac fans go up and start ripping him. And they, tell, they, tell, you know, they call it out, and Mark Dice ignores it. He says he doesn't censor his YouTube page. He reads those comments. Why doesn't he respond? Why is uh, I want to know Mark Dice and Alex Jones. Why don't you respond to us? Why don't you respond to the young jerks? I want you to come on the show. We're inviting you on the show. Answer to answer our questions. Answer our criticism of of you of your work. You think you'll come on? I don't think they have the. We balls. could always ask. I don't think they have the guts. We could to make come a on. YouTube video. As tough as Alex acts, he ain't that tough. Uh, and I'm calling you. You want to come on, scare me? Cause you, I will. I'll be. I'll a, slap an injunction yeah. on you, brother. Yeah, and that's then I'll solar plex you in a cage match. I mean, that's what we expect from him is uh, an injunction, not actually come on the show. And that says a lot to me. Probably hear from his lawyers before you hear from exactly. him. Exactly true. And um, I bet they wear Stetsons too. I bet they do. Probably. <laughs> I bet they do. And now, speaking of Alex Jones, I want to talk about another guy named Hal Turner. Do you guys know about Hal Turner? Oh, Hal. I like to talk about Hal Turner. Hal, Hal Turner is, I believe right now, still in federal jail. He was convicted federally. Um, anonymous punked him. He had a radio show. Let's go give a little background. Look up Hal Turner. There's a nice, nice wiki page on the internet about him. Hal Turner, he's a radio, right-wing radio show host who was a neo-Nazi. He uh, didn't like certain federal judges, posted their information, goaded people to attack federal officials, was a neo-Nazi, but he was also working for the FBI. He was a you federal don't say. Woman. So we got the COINTEL for a finally. <laughs> well, we, we do know it does still exist to a certain extent. Clearly. But, it, but it's, it's, it's the informant variety through the FBI that we always see. This is just like Whitey Bulger. This is just like maybe even Boston bombing. Uh, which we don't want to talk about, it seems like, in the Boston media. Ha, ha, ha. The connection between the FBI and all these bad acts that always happen, it, it almost seems like they set up crime, they want it to happen so they can come in and uh, be the big heroes and get funding. And, and, and that is, to me, the bigger conspiracy that you don't see that these guys are talking about. I, I really haven't seen uh, Mark Dice or Alex Jones talk much about Hal Turner. Hal Turner um, was convicted... Proven to be an FBI informant. It's funny how the feds, they'll, they'll use you for a while, but they'll still throw you in jail for what they, they ask you to do for them. Um, and basically, he, he was there to set people up. That's what his job was. He did it well, apparently. Um, speaking of FBI Boston bombing. Yeah. Well, I mean, just to, to, oh, you to a point about, yeah. Yeah, about yeah, the we'll FBI is yeah. that over the last few years, you know, you have uh, the 
was like a 17 year old kid that was going to um, blow up the Federal Reserve over in it was it Minnesota. I remember that. Yeah. Um, I yeah. think it was it was in the Midwest. A young I kid that gets set up. Young kid that the the FBI found him online and they radicalized him. You have another instance where, I mean, you can go back to the first World Trade Center bombing where the FBI was found to have been working with the informant that actually gave them the bomb in the first place to blow it up. And he was like, hey, this is a real bomb, and that's all on tape, and you can listen to it. And so you have a history, the FBI has a history of setting people, setting up. people up and creating criminals and creating crime in order to justify either their budget or to justify some sort of a political or agenda. Or to find the wiggly finger quotes bigger fish. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, can we talk about Whitey Bulger? Push. But, but like, Whitey you know, Bulger was lo- allowed to murder people in Boston yep. with FBI sponsorship so they could get the Italians, so they could get the La, La Costa Nostra, yeah. who were probably, honestly, I'd rather deal with them than Whitey Bulger. No you know kidding. What I'm like, no kidding. Seriously, at least you can, uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm supporting the mafia today, apparently, because <laughs> there's certain levels of mafia that it seems like... We're know, looking for a sponsor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can make an offer to us. But we, we're going to get back to the FBI again, because uh, the Boston bombing. They they uh, they interviewed the older tar- uh, Sarnoff after he went to Chechnya. Did they ask him to become a federal informant? Who knows? Was he a federal informant? Uh, nobody knows. Like, there's no way to find out. If why not? Well, isn't he dead? Well, yeah. Yeah, but shouldn't we shouldn't we be able <laughs> to get like that information from the FBI? Well, I well, I mean, oh, you don't in, trust in, the in FBI a few, in a few years, yeah. You well, don't trust look at them? what they did to uh, what the, isn't what hasn't been redacted. What happened in Florida? Yeah, we're, we're going to get to that. That's the next spot, Frank. Why don't you tell us about that? So, Toda Toda Chef, Toda Chef, yeah. So you had this associate of Sarnef, the, one of the Sarnef brothers, Toda Chef, who was living in Florida, FBI from Boston, along I believe with state police as well, right? Mass, Mass state, state police. police were there. Went down to question this dude who was an acquaintance of one of the Sardinov brothers. Who, who they knew was dangerous. And who he was like an MMA up, fighter. Or MMA, yeah. No, but he had been violent in the past. And oh, they knew yeah, about he'd been convicted. And they, they had basically, you know, if you look back in the history, they were, they were setting this guy up for Toda Chef. Um, he had been in a fight like a year before, and then the Federal Bureau of Investigation went out and got the old victim to press charges when they were trying to interview him. Like, they, they, they really did some weird stuff with this whole thing. And then they. Go to his condo instead of bringing him in. Yeah, they hang out with him in his condo for six hours. And when they think he's got about to, when he's writing his confession of a triple murder in Waltham that we all want to know about, he gets killed by the FBI agent. That's right, because he picked up a uh, an object. Well, first they said it was a knife, oh, and then it was yeah. a gun, and then it was a pole, and then it was, I mean... And then it was nothing, because yeah. that's what It happened. was a stick. They murdered the guy. They executed the guy. I think it was guy. a broomstick. They, they executed the, end, they the guy with his. With, you, so you need to shoot a dude. He's got a broomstick. Yeah. Well, yeah, and the thing is about this too. This it's came out this week. The the uh, Boston Globe actually did some great work on this. They uh, they've been actually investigating this quite well. The Boston Globe. I got to give them credit on this. Um, they found out who the FBI agent was that actually shot Todeshev and killed him. And uh, it turns out the officer has quite the checkered past as a police officer. You don't been say. Sued. Uh, you know, all the stuff that you don't want to see from police officers, lying, assault, you know, all, all the, you know, all the stuff that we call police brutality, police corruption. This guy has allegedly taken part in that, and that's the one who killed uh, Todeshev. No wonder why the FBI wanted to blank his name out and try to keep it secret. If it wasn't for the Boston Globe, we wouldn't even know his name. Why do we accept this? Why do we let the FBI continue to p- pull this crap off in our city? I mean, how many times has the FBI murdered somebody, you know? Whitey Bulger. How many people I were mean, murdered by him? the dude from the Black Panthers. They murdered him while he was sleeping in his bed. I know. You know? I mean, we so, have a, an FBI that has bo- dropped bombs on houses in this country. <laughs> like, I mean, come on. Rolled tanks through yeah. compounds. Yeah, you know? And we're I mean, supposed the to government is completely out of control. Yeah, we're supposed to be scared, uh, afraid of the Illuminati. We're supposed to be afraid of the New World Order. I'm not afraid of any of them. I mean, I'm not even afraid. You know, I'm not going to say I'm not afraid of the FBI. But I'm really not because I'm not doing anything. Let them try to set me up. I don't care. I'm like, the, the, I'm challenge? at the point. Where, is that a new yeah, game, right? Yeah, because you can't set me up. You I'm not doing NSA anything wrong. Handler is furiously yeah, typing. Yeah, right that's now. right. Oh, we should say hello to our friends at the Brick Fusion Center right now. We're having this conversation. <laughs> What's that, up, that guys? Be, that would be my uh, starring role. That would be when I would get uh, Johnny Depp to play me next. 
<laughs> you gonna get Johnny Depp as Mike Can if, if they try to set did me you, up? Did you t- did you mention the fact that the Todeshev, um the fact they went to talk to him was in connection to the triple homicide in Waltham they were investigating? Yes, yes. yeah, we said that. Oh. Yeah, you missed. I got, I got distracted for half a second. Because, <laughs> like, cause, like, cause I was, you know, super skeptical of the whole thing. Because, you know, I'm a truther. I believe, you know, nine eleven truth and this kind of thing. But like, something like the Boston bombing happens. That's right here in our backyard. I was like about a mile away. So like, I don't. I'm like, I don't want to jump right on this and be like, oh my god, you know, the feds did it or something. But then, then the Boston and Massachusetts State Police and FBI go to Miami and kill that dude. And it's like, come on. Yeah. Or well, the fact that they gave the younger brother when they got on the boat, the second they they gave him a tracheotomy, just bam, cut his throat open and shoved the pipe in it, and then the two dudes that did that fell out of a helicopter <laughs> and they're dead. Yeah. Like that's a reality. Well, a lot of crazy like that's stuff. real. A that's not crazy. crazy. That's not not crazy. What? Hey, What's I just got out of like. <laughs> What's up with falling out of helicopters? Like Seal like, Team Six <laughs> after they got Bin Laden fell out of a helicopter. It must be crash. like some sort of a celebration. Just it just keeps going wrong, but they just keep doing that's it. When you don't, that, you, friends don't let friends drive helicopters while they're drunk. <laughs> I guess not. That we're going down the rabbit hole, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, this is all reality. So like, I, I, I want to ask everyone one last question. Is falling out of the question. helicopter, like, code for something? <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask everyone one last question. Are you scared of the Illuminati? No. Honestly, if Justin Bieber morphs into a half lizard, fucking whatever, excuse me, uh, whatever kind of thing, like, it, whatever, more power to him. Like, I don't care. No, that's the trap. The Illuminati, um, there's actual people who are responsible for things that we can name, we can identify, and we can actually take action against. Yeah. The Illuminati yep. is the trap to keep you powerless. Yeah, that's right. And we can get people to help us out and work with us. Uh, we go. Out, I'm going after this guy, Brian Joyce, the Mass State Senator. We all are on the show that's today. Right. But we had Democrats come in the last two or three weeks. That's what I'm calling Mark Dice and Alex Jones on. They got a thousand times the listenership we do. Why don't we invite why, Mr. Why Joyce? Aren't, why yeah. aren't they getting anyone elected? Let's get Joyce why the aren't show. they lobbying uh, officials on all sides? Why are they just focused on Lady Gaga? Why are they just focused on shadow? Fear, 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 fear. Buy my Kool Aid. Yeah. That's right. Be afraid. Be very afraid. I'm not afraid of you, Alex. And send Jones. me money. I'm not Be afraid, afraid of you, and send me money. I'm money. not afraid of any of them. 617 500 7100. We are the young jerks. We've been talking for a while. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to Stephen Halfa, Cambridge Citizens for Smokers' Rights. We're going to get into the smoking fines, the smoking bans, what people can do if they don't agree with it. Hey, maybe you do agree with it. Call in and tell us why. Maybe you think people should be fined for smoking in parks. That's there right. 617-500-7100. We're going to take a break, and I think we're going to listen to a promo, hopefully, if we can get that on today. It's uh, from Carmelita's show, comes after us, smoking in the girls' room. We are WEMF, the Young Jerks, WEMF Radio. Smoking with you, got them. WEMF Radio Now.